Welcome to part two of I'm 37 years old, I'm starting over, and I'm scared. I feel a little more confident today in sharing more of this story after getting over the initial fear of sharing my story. Just to let you know how impactful and how much it affects me when there's something that doesn't sit right with my spirit, I have bad dreams about it. So naturally, last night after starting to open up about my story and to share a little bit about myself with you and what I've been through in the hopes that it will help other people gain confidence and courage and strength and get out of any situation that they're in that they shouldn't be in, I had bad dreams about it. So there's that. Yesterday I shared with you and I said in 2022 Christmas Eve I called my dad crying in tears and I asked him to come pick up me and my three kids. The reason being is because I had finally had enough. I finally came to the realization that things weren't going to get better. We tried counseling. I was in a very controlling relationship. So much so that from the time that we moved in together in 2019, it just felt like everything that made me who I was, was being stripped away from me. I was being isolated from my friends, my family, even my coworkers. And I was being forced to become someone or a version of myself that I absolutely was not. And the crazy thing is, is that's not who I was when he met me. He knew who I was when he met me. But once we moved in together, everything changed. And everything was about forcing me and changing me into something that I wasn't. And over the course of the three years of living together, I, I, my light started dimming. And eventually I ended up depressed. But I had enough. I was taken away from my friends. I used to hang out with my friends all the time. And then we moved in together and I was basically having to negotiate when I could go with my friends and ask permission. This is how it felt from my point of view, asking permission to go places or asking or needing permission to talk on the phone to my family members because we were quote unquote building a business and we needed to focus on the business. But in doing so, it meant I couldn't talk to whoever I wanted to talk to when I wanted to talk to them. And I get that there has to be a level of focus, especially when you're building a business. But you can't force someone not to communicate with people who have who have loved them their entire life. It was like I was being forced to only and solely rely and depend on him. In January of 2020, I was forced to stop working my part-time job at the fitness center. I had already stopped working my full-time job. I'd saved up money. I had a vision and a plan somewhat of life. I just didn't know really how to go about it, but I still kept my part-time job because it was still income. I was still a way for me to get out and be around people. And it was still a way for me to serve people in a different capacity. Well, I was forced to leave that job. So now I'm not allowed to talk to my family and friends whenever I want. I'm not allowed to go visit people whenever I want. And now I'm not leaving the house just to go work a part-time job. And in all transparency, once once my son was born, it was great not to have to leave the house, plus COVID hit anyways, but it was great to just be focused on him and spend time with him. But my, my boss at my part-time job had given me an opportunity to still stay on schedule and work part-time and do some things from home so that I could still be in the system and still be getting income. And he told me, no, I couldn't do that. So I'm losing access to the outside world. And I'm forced to deal with someone constantly saying that I'm not good enough. What I'm doing isn't good enough. 
and be like this person, be like that person. Like the control was to such a level that even if I posted something on Instagram, he had access to my Instagram account and if he didn't like it, he would delete it. And then he would go find profiles of other women and influencers and tell me, I need to have my page look like this. It needs to be washed out. It needs to be white, clean, and crisp. And that's fine for the people who that's for, but I'm a colorful person. And everything about who I was at my core was being stripped away from me. You know, I would wonder, I can remember hearing on the news about a football player who had knocked out his girlfriend and she stayed with him and he went to counseling and they did all of the anger management and everything. And I would ask myself, why in the world would you stay with someone who would abuse you? And then there I was in a relationship, in a marriage for three years with someone who was abusing me. Someone who would pretend or say that they wanted to protect me. Like if I was out, let them know, let him know where I was going. And I, I could feel in my spirit that it wasn't about him being able to protect me, more so about keeping tabs on me and keeping track on me. But there I was, I was that, that woman in a relationship. And I bet you asked the same thing, like why in the world would you stay with someone who's abusing you? For me, there were several different factors into this though the first one being i was scared uh and you know it wasn't about scared of what he would do if i exposed him or called the police because if i call the police then i'm not worrying about it anymore i was scared about all of the consequences that came with 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 being open and honest and truthful he had two kids pr from a previous marriage and there was a moment where i had my phone after one of the incidences and i had dialed 911 and i just could not press call all of these thoughts were going through my head if i call the police on him the first thing i'm thinking about is the two kids that we don't have custody of, that we get to visit, that get to come over and visit his children, they're old enough to know my dad got arrested and went to jail. And to think after all of the things that they have been through in their life, how would that have an impact on them? Knowing that their dad is in prison because I called the police. I didn't want that pressure on me. I didn't want that weight on me and as sad as it sounds that wasn't my responsibility to to concern myself with the pressure and the weight that would come from his actions but i was concerned about the consequences of his actions and how they would affect his children then it was okay i'm living with this this man my husband I've been cut off from my friends. I've been cut off from my family. I don't have a job and we're in a, in a rental property. And I have a new baby. If I call the police on him, I don't have any income and I'm under contract. What am I going to do? And it wasn't just physical abuse. It was emotional abuse it was mental abuse it was spiritual abuse and you may be asking how can someone spiritually abuse you they how i was spiritually abused was reading second corinthians and what a wife is supposed to be how a wife is supposed to submit to her husband how a wife is supposed to do this and that completely omitting what the bible says about a husband and how he's supposed to treat his wife and how if he's mistreating his wife his prayers aren't answered we never talked about that part. So some advice for, for someone just in the future or if you're going through anything now, you know, you know, it's funny. He would always say, you have to read the Bible for yourself. 
read the Bible for yourself because I was in a phase, I was in a phase in my life where I still believed in God, but after my mom passing from cancer and me not grasping all of this and why as spiritual and connected she was to God, why this happened to her? Why didn't she get better when people who were appeared to be even more unhealthy than she was could beat it? Why did she have to leave? So I had this this doubt in my mind about Jesus and I was more so in a frame of mind where I believed in God but I wasn't sure if the Bible stories were true or more so just stories to help you navigate through life and so he would use the Bible everything was what he said there was a presence about him in the house it wasn't a respect, it was a fear. He he demanded respect, but I didn't have respect for someone who would abuse me. I was just afraid. Even when we we did counseling, I'm like, we need to do counseling, but it had to be someone he chose. Then he chose a counselor and he wouldn't do what the counselor said. He wanted to know why everything had to be on him. Well, if you're this person who believes in God and Jesus and you call yourself a Christian and you say that you follow Christ, you're supposed to be the example of someone who's not or someone who doesn't fully all the way agree with everything. But then when you are told that this is your responsibility as the head of the house, you want to be respected, you want to be the leader, but you don't want the responsibility of doing the hard work, which is showing me Jesus through your actions not forcing me to become someone that I was never created to be. And my advice for anyone is don't follow someone who can't be led. If you're looking for someone to follow or someone to lead you in your life, in your relationships, in your business, in your education, in any area, you need to be able to submit to someone who can submit to someone? Any person who believes that they know enough to not submit to anyone and follow the lead of someone else, they're not fit to lead. So there I was forced to follow a leader who would not be led by even the very people that he, he chose to be counsel for us. So it was a lot. It was a lot of constantly not feeling like you're ever going to be enough, regardless of how hard you try. And I've learned a lot from this marriage. I've learned how to communicate better, how to get my point across, to say what I mean. I've learned how to be more open to hearing and listening to what's being said for understanding purposes and not just back and forth. So there's been some good advice. Every season in life is not beautiful, but we can choose to learn from the bad seasons so that all things work together for our good. So that's part two. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for allowing me to be open and share and be vulnerable with you. And I hope that what I'm saying reaches the people it's meant to reach. And if you know anyone or suspect that you know anyone who's in an abusive relationship, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, Share this with them because no one deserves to be abused on any level. We all deserve to be loved. That's what we all were created, to be in communion and community with other people. And your community can save you. Your community has the power to help you get to where God wants you to be in life, in relationships, in business, in education, in whatever area. So don't let someone steal you away from your community. But also be mindful of the community that you are in. 
and start assessing whether or not this community is healthy for you or if it's holding you back. I love you.